Welcome back, everybody. We are again jumping into the action with Rutgers taking on Abilene Christian. And we saw Rutgers on Tuesday, Stents, and things were looking uh, pretty good for them, to be honest. It was a pretty, I don't know, I would say a close match, but Rutgers definitely put up a lot of effort in the, of course, the game that we saw. So as we go into Abilene Christian, a team that I personally do not know enough about to really comment on what we we're going to expect from them, expectations for this matchup as we get digging in? Uh, I expect this one to be closer than our previous match teams undefeated both with wins on their under their belts as it were um acu has a season zero veteran huntley he's going to be their leader in respawn kd with a over a 3-0 kd so expect huntley to kind of come out but none of the, once again none of the none of these players on either teams are slouches they're all here to perform and i'm excited to see this one absolutely i mean again we saw Rutgers take care of uh, I believe it was GCC, if I'm not mistaken, or Georgia Southern is what it was. I, I think it was what it was when we saw them on Tuesday. And yeah, they played very, very well throughout the entirety of all three game modes. But again, Abilene Christian, you mentioned it sitting on top of their division as well. This should be a kind of a battle of the Titans, at least somewhat so early on. As again, we've seen a lot of kind of 3-0s, 3-1s going through. Potential for a five-game set, though, here as we dig into both these teams sitting near the top of their divisions. Yeah, right. If I had to choose one, I'd probably lean towards ACU just because kind of their slay power in the respawns. But I mean, we've seen Rutgers; they got that that win on on Tuesday as a, against a very good opponent. So we'll be able to see just two very good teams go up against each other. Hope to see a little bit of a back and forth series, a longer series, maybe go four games, five games if we're lucky. And I'm excited to get into this one. We got. Looks like most of the players in the lobby were waiting on one. But, yeah, as, as we look at the map set here for this match, we got Frequency up first, this Frequency <laughs> Hardpoint. So we're going to a different map. You'd love to see it. Do you expect anything anything special to happen on Frequency, anything to look out for from these two squads? The biggest thing that I remember watching from Rutgers when we saw them play Frequency before was that they were just winning the SOG gameplay. The SMGs up close and personal were just going the way of Rutgers time and time again. This map, especially when it comes to the hard point, that is one of the big keys when it comes to not only winning the hard points themselves, but also taking close quarters fights on rotations, as you're going to have to do that considering where the hard points are located in small halls always closed areas and of course you only have that one big hard point sitting down where uh the b-bomb site is and the uh, underneath that kind of ledge area but even still you can play around the pipes you can play around the ladders and those smgs really do have a huge impact when it comes to frequency in my book yeah but after frequency we're going back seems to be a favorite of the cco we got three straight arsenals again and uh hopefully we get to see that map five hacienda just to just to see another map but uh, based on how these two teams, their, their matchup-wise, it's not a stretch to say we'll make it there. And I know I, for one, am hoping to see a Hacienda. Yeah, you, by the sound of your voice there, Stets, it doesn't seem like you're super excited to see three more Arsenals in a row. What's wrong with Arsenal? You feel, uh, you feel it's like a, you're just bashing a little bit here. Uh, it's a great map. It's got some great setups. <laughs> it's it's a very, very often practiced maps, map, which is why we see it so often. It's, it's a lot of players' favorites because there's so many different ways you can play it. And you can get your setups and you can hold them very well. And it just comes down to gunfights at that point. But, you know, I'm a fan of variety. It's always nice to see some different maps thrown in there. We got so many great maps in Black Ops 4 to choose from on the competitive side. And hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to see some of those maps into these next series coming up here. Yeah, and I just apologize. It wasn't uh, Georgia Southern. It was uh, RIT Black this is what we saw Rutgers play up against. I got my sets mixed up with their opponents. But, again, frequency coming up to us first and foremost. That outer this neutral hard point at the very beginning – is absolutely just the 50-50 point of the ages. And it comes down to, again, not only winning the point, but if you are the team that spawns on the far side away from the second hard point, can you actually break the point and push through to try to flip the spawns? There are a lot of things kind of pinned up against you to start off the map, and we are digging into it immediately. So ACU Esports taking on Rutgers Frequency hard point. And uh, again, you mentioned a couple of players that we saw pop off from Rutgers. Ignite Lou was the star from... Tuesday, we'll see if we can continue to find that premium diesel here once again on Thursday. Yeah, as we go into this first tilt, it, this map is one of the only maps to a Spitfire viable, but I'm not going to see any on the map here. Dogs back and forth, gunfights going back and forth, but it looks like the side of Rutgers is going to be getting this early time. 
looking to set themselves up, but ooh, Ari actually finding himself a lot of damage, and that's going to open up some space for ACU to move on in. The Sogs will ring out for one. Maddox over the middle for another, but the trades are there, so Huntley, you got to get involved, my man. You got to get in there, and he will try to, but it will be in staggered form, so it will be essentially a full team wipe. Now ACU sitting with only 23 seconds. You have to lock down all of the spawns for this next point, and Rutgers is pushing forward, already finding himself two eliminations, and now moving into the hard point itself. This is looking really dangerous. If Rutgers can flip the spawns, they can string together these hard points very nicely. Yeah, I mean, this next bottom orange lab hill here is something where the spawns are incredibly crucial to win, to be able to have that early setup and rack up that time on this hill. Because if you do have those spawns, this can be a very big money hill. Right now, the gunfight's going in favor of ACU as they're going to be able to get these early time here. But there's one player going for the spawns right here. He's able to win the gunfights. We'll see where the players end up spawning and ACU able to hold those spawns for now. A beautiful double hit though from Rutgers as Ignite Lou came to the window to hit the front while two more players were flanking from either side to hit the back. And yes, they do hold the spawns for at least one more respawn to ACU, but that's going to get broken immediately after all those trades went the way of Rutgers. And so it looks like the spawns will be favoring the side of our Scarlet Knights. And Huntley will find himself two to break on and find a little bit of extra time, but he's got to play his life for as long as possible. Nobody else is really all that much here. Huntley will stand back up, find himself two kills, at least one and a half. I'm looking for potentially a third, and this is actually resulting in a lot of valuable time for ACU. Yeah, and the one thing to point out, the players on the side of Rutgers are still spawning at this old hill, and ACU is set up perfectly for the next hill on this blue lab side. So if they're able to hold these spawns, they can get themselves right back into this game. And it's going to be just a hit from the platform and the outer ledge from two members from Rutgers as they try to flank around. They need to win the fight up front first. The beatdown is good for Lou. The Maddox better, though, for Abilene Christian. And it looks like at this point, it just comes down to who can win these hallway fights. Though Lou will take the elbow poke, but will not win it around. And it's just down to Jace as he's got a nice cluster set up. He can find a lot of value and he finds three well timed. Able to take down nearly everybody on Rutgers by himself. That is going to result in excellent time for ACU. Yeah, right there. That is an example of why some players opt to run that flak jacket right there. So that kind of situation does not happen. But he's able to find three with that cluster nade, ever so powerful. And they're able to rack up this time. They are taking the lead here, 60 to 59, as this hill gets contested. We look over towards the rotation. Guess who's there? ACU is there early. But the gunfights are going in favor of Rutgers. We'll see if they're able to get this, not only this scrap time, but able to get this early hill time too. You gotta watch from Ty's perspective. This SOG is gonna be absolutely massive in those underneath pi uh, pi pipes, rather. And actually gonna be the SOG of Prodigy to find the first kill. So it's gonna actually back up Ty, looking to try to hit this one with another teammate. And it looks like from the outside, there will be a little bit of a pinch coming out, but able to recept it pretty mostly nicely was ACU, at least at first. Indian Gamer will trade things around with three of his own and make that make a fourth. Goodness sure. gracious, he's putting himself on fleek right now. Yeah, he just decided, I want this hill for my team. He went in and he got it done. But right now, nobody's in the hill. He gets a streak called in, only able to find a team kill for Huntley. That's not what you want to see with your streaks there. As uh, the side of Rutgers is able to continue to hold this hill, they're racking up, making a bigger and bigger lead as we rotate over towards the next hill. You take a peek over there. You got ACU setting up early. Be able to see if they're able to hold it as they opt to give up this scrap time. For Abilene Christian, though, you would like to see them set up more over the middle just to get themselves a line of sights on these rotations, not just turtle up. They're trying to, but it's a little bit late, and Indian Gamer actually sniffs out where the spawns are coming from for ACU. Jace will try to play his life for as long as possible on Hill, but he needs assistance, and finally it comes that from the Sog of Huntley, who's looking over the middle, but now from the outside area, Ty able to clean up two, looking for a third. He's going to try to slide on in, but... Not able to find the right peak, and just from behind over the middle, able to take down one was Prodigy, but he meets up with the Tempest, who not able to find the hit fire, but Ari's able to clean up the rest of the damage on point. So it will result in a break and likely time. Although Ty actually comes through and grabs slams into one of his teammates. So all of a sudden things are not known numerically in favor of Rutgers. It just comes down to base. You can find the gunfights. They will be able to do it. Jace needs to win this last one. Won't be able to do it though, so it will be Rutgers just holding on, increasing their lead up to 120 to 80. Yeah, I mean, right now, looking at the kill department, the one man that sticks out, and not in a good way for the side of ACU, is Inquisition, sitting at 3 and 16. That's going to account for this lead difference here. You want to see him step it up towards the second half of this map if you are a fan of ACU and are looking for them to get back into this one. 
But early on this next hill, Rutgers with early control. They have spawns. They have the setup. AC is going to have to break and bait. X-Factor pulls out a Tempest. Going to be hitting from the front of the hill. But met by an Annihilator by Lou. Able to pick up two. Oof. Trade it out right there. But the gunfights go in favor of the side of Rutgers. And they're going to be able to hold this hill. Fortunately, Ty was able to sit there and win out that last trade. Rust's shots from Lou did not allow him to find that third and last opponent coming from the hallways. Trophy system finding some effectiveness here as Huntley just is holding a tight corner. And he was so successful on this point before. He's trying to find a similar tune this time around, but does not expect the flank from middle. Fortunately, his team is able to pick him back up, at least for a small amount of time. But still a very successful second point. It's still almost a 60-point differential, though, so we still need to see more from ACU. It's going to come in the back end of Attack 5 being popped as we go to the third hard point. Yeah, and we're looking at the side of Rutgers. You got streaks on the Indian Gamer here. And a light. See if you'll use those to try to break spawns here as ACU is set up for this next blue hill, but it looks like they're gonna try to win it with their gun skill. They're gonna flood the hill. They're gonna able to win the gunfight there. They, they do pop that attack five. And yeah, they're they able to take control of that hard point. They don't need the spawns. They just hit through the front and the side and they're able to take it for now. Really, it is textbook play from Indian Gamer there, poking out, getting some damage or a kill, and then surviving. Although, as I say that, he doesn't, he's not able to replicate that time around. The War Machine coming out for ACU. Only able to find one with it, but still, the point has been broken. And the spawn's also being won, as you see him in the minimap into the left-hand side. Although, Palma is there to try to contest for as long as possible, but there's only 23 seconds left. So, if you're Rutgers, ideal situation is you break, leave one player there, and then start rotating after the outer edges. But... It's actually ACU who's able to do almost what was scripted there for the moment as they're able to leave just beasting on the point and everybody else from ACU will just put themselves on the last hard point of this rotation looking for some long range gunfights but Indian Gamer has been really in tune with this Maddox as he's able to find one more at mid range and it just comes down to a one on one on point as Prodigy is here with Ty. Yeah but you see those streaks area. coming in no, from Indian they, Gamer. Yeah, huge. And that, that's exactly what you can use on this outdoor hill. You're able to rain down that hellstorm only able to find one but I mean, this is the one hill on this map where you got a really open hill. You can use those aerial streaks to able just to rain fire down on your opponents. As this hill is continuing to be contested, looks like the gunfights go the way of Rutgers. But more players from ACU fly in. There's a grab slam used, only able to find one. Just back and forth. Saw gameplay at the end. We'll find a second at least. And so that's not the worst case scenario, but again, not a full break. So you would love to have seen a little bit more out of the use of the specialist, but. You can sing a similar tune as far as how the score streaks went for Rutgers earlier on in that engagement, but still they're in control. Are the Scarlet Knights sitting with just 12 seconds left to soak? Ari's on the rotation trying to find a way to win this outer edge work, but there's just too many players here in purple. And that's going to result in ACU winning the trades in the rotation, and they will get early set up here on our third rotation, first hard point. And glancing up at the specialist, looks like Huntley is going to be very close to or has Annihilator if he opts to use it for this next hill. But everyone else is going to have to do a little bit more work to earn theirs as we go towards this Jace. first hill. Jace is looking so good with this Maddox in these mid-range fights. And now all of Rucker is trying to push on this outer edge. No specialists being popped at the moment, but Huntley is still holding onto that Annihilator for what almost feels like too long at this point. He's sitting at 24 and 19, has had it for a minute, but is just not pulling the trigger on pulling it out. Team kill will actually help out Rutgers on the point, but a beatdown shot will come out from Beastin to keep things back alive. And now Huntley up close and personal with the SOG. He's been good, but not good enough there as Rutgers will continue to contest and almost actually break. But fortunately, Prodigy comes back in to at least just delay a little bit longer. But 2.05 is what we'll see on the scoreboard, a 50-point lead for Rutgers as we go to the next hard point. Yeah, and you see there Palma with the big play forces ACU to spawn out over towards this old hill. So there's only one player here. So Rutgers is going to have the rotation for this next hill, and that's just really what's so big about this hill. If you can get those very close spawns, you can just keep flooding and flooding the hill to try to land. But the Annihilator comes out from Huntley to try to lock down this hill. And the Tempest, Tempest you see, is X-Factor. But team kill. gracious enough. <laughs> X-Factor, you did your work, Huntley says. Puts him down. <laughs> Let you sit at your pinnacle, but I was a little questioning the call at first here, Stenson. We'll talk about this later after the game, but double specialists being used stacked on top of each other in the same line of sight, and it did result in a full team wipe, but AC will hold on for a small moment. You just wonder if that was the proper min-max of utilizing those. Beasting does have another attack five as well as they're looking to rotate. 17 seconds, wanting to win out these trades. This is the proper timing. Beasting, this is an absolutely great use of the 200. 
yeah, you really want to lock this down if you are Rutgers. You don't want to let ACU get claw into a lead here as we go towards this next hill. It's 210 to 196 in favor of Rutgers. And the gunfights in the hill go towards ACU. So this is big time here for the side of ACU. They're, they're just, if they can get this set up and they can rack down all this time, they win the game. So Rutgers is going to have to find a way to break into this hill and fast. Well, they have plenty of tools. Almost every specialist ready to go. You're looking at the Annihilator. The Tempest as well as the Grab Slam. Again, this just comes down to will they actually pull it out. Here comes Indian Gamer pulling out the Tempest, and he wants to spawn camp with it. But maybe he's going to look more towards the elbow side of the map. Not exactly sure where their opponents are spawning because it is a split spawn for ACU, and it's actually favoring our team in purple. As Inquisition wants to get there faster, will grapple up, and he's right behind Ty. That should be a free kill. And that's going to be, again, more time to contest. That's absolutely valuable, especially if he wins that gunfight. Inquisition with a second. He needs to find a third. He just needs to stay alive at this point. Okay, 15 seconds left in contest. ACU is coming back to Flood. Rutgers still increasing their lead, but it's going to come down to this last hard point. Yeah, and the Indian Gamer, that lightning strike might come in big here as we go kill operation. See, their team is able to win it here. It's all going to come down to the next hill. Unable to find anything with that streak usage. And ACU, with the early control of this next hill, these gunfights are so, so crucial. Jace with go. no attack mask will be stunned for an eternity, and so it will be Rutgers turning this hard point in their favor early, and it comes down to can Oh, goodness, Ignite Lou. With the Annihilator, he's been so dangerous with this before, but the War Machine is coming out. And I was about to say, that's the only thing that Jace could use and ACU could potentially hold on to as far as getting back into this hard point, but he's used so much while he was stunned and nobody could get there in time, so it will actually favor the 250 to 219 scoreline for Rutgers, but goodness, it was a show there near the end, Stents. Yeah, I mean, that, that got close. It got heated. The gunfights were being traded back and forth. Much closer than our first match between these two squads. Both teams able to eclipse the 200-point mark in this one. And looks like Rutgers was just able to clear out at the end, control that hill for just long enough. And the, their ability to break hills quickly is what won them that game. ACU yeah. could get in and have the rotations early, which which means they know exactly what they're doing. They're rotating early, able to set up. But Rutgers was able to win the gunfights they needed to break those hills and then hold those hills for the rest of that time. And they weren't going for just 10 or 15 seconds. They were getting 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds even on those hills. So their breaks were impeccable. But I wanted to go back to it because we did at that one point saw ACU it was value out of both the Annihilator and the Tempest on that second hard point in that lights area, but they were stacked on top of each other and they were both watching the same line of sight. That typically is something you need to look at and say, we need to communicate better because they're essentially serving the same purpose. That time through the Tempest was totally fine as you found, again, that huge chain that you called so nicely. And you have to wonder if they had that Annihilator later, could they have potentially broken one more hard point on the back end of it and made this more of a game? That's what we were talking about after we saw our first set today where it was 250 to 10. You can kind of throw those things away and say, all right, we're just weren't ready to play against these guys. But in this situation, 250 to essentially 220, you have to let those things kind of sit there and fester as it comes down to did we actually utilize our specialists fully? And if we were to have done something differently, would we have actually had a better chance to take it? My answer would have said probably yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the one thing you can kind of argue at that, that point, they were down, say, 210 to, like, I want to say 170-ish. So they really needed to lock down that point. But I agree 100%. They really should have only used one specialist there. And then have Huntley, say, sit kind of in the back. And if that Tempest doesn't work out, then pull out the Annihilator and lock down that time. Because at the end of the day there, you didn't need both of those specialists. Because as that uh, Tempest chains, I mean, those players are stuck on the ground. They're not going to fire back at you. They can't. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think it just comes down to a, a bum special usage that may have helped them out on those next hills. Well, again, this is kind of the the thrill of watching, you know, the, the tier down from our pro league when it comes down to possibly tier two, tier three, when it comes to these orgs and the collegiate scene. You do see things that are just not givens when it comes down to when you watch the pro league games. Things like score streaks not finding value or finding teammates or specialists being stacked up once on top of each other. Those are things that we look for in these teams to possibly clean up in the future. But again, that was just map one. We will be going back to Arsenal, Stent, so don't fret. I know that you love going there, my man. We'll be back to it just a minute as we uh, set up for the search and destroy. And uh, we saw a great Paladin stuff happening you know, with our last set. This is probably one of, I would say, maybe two maps that we could really get away with using a Paladin. I hope we see more of it. Yeah, I mean, we love those flashy plays as casters. It gives up something to hype up. And for, for the viewers at home, it's you those, those flick headshots, those quick scopes.
but sometimes those snipers can put you at a disadvantage if you go towards the end of a round and you're stuck in a 2v3 maybe one player stuck with that sniper but the nice thing is you get to keep that mozu in your back pocket that thing's a little pocket shotgun if you got the <laughs> trigger finger for it and if you're sniping you probably have the trigger finger for that mozu so as we go into this next S and D, I hoped, like as you said, to see that sniper gameplay come out. And that was again it's important to know. I believe it was Rutgers host, which those things do matter when it comes down to these games. They're not on local networks, so those things can have an impact when it comes down to things like opening registrations, things of that nature. But as we go into search and destroy, anything can happen. Again, we're seeing a lot of really great things going on for both teams. Just a couple small things here and there. So we'll see if these teams can clean it up and make a show of Arsenal on Search and Destroy. We'll be back just after this with the continuation of Rutgers versus Abilene Christian. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. We are here. Again, doesn't feel like we left for that long on Arsenal again. This will be Search and Destroy. Abilene Christian down one against Rutgers. Looking to make a comeback here on the Search and Destroy. And that will be starting themselves off, it looks like, on the offense. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any sniper gameplay off the rip here. I went through the classes real quick. And on the offensive side of things, you're going to see ACU pushing over towards this B-bomb site and mid. Interesting strat here off the rip, trying to catch them maybe off guard, but you have a standard defensive setup on the side of Rutgers, a 2-1-2 split. The gunfights go down, they go in favor of ACU, and the rotation comes in, able to pick up one, wow. but it's a 4v2 in favor of ACU. It looks like they're going to opt to get the bomb down here. And it's just really up to what Indian Gamer can play from the middle over here. And Ari, oh, that's a clutch gunfight to win on the tight corner. Now, with the bomb being down, oh, I don't really know if I like that peak. You have a teammate just right behind this push, and you could have set up a nice little pinch, but now with one little desk pop coming out from Indian Gamer, they're going to know where he is, and all of a sudden around that very well could have been turned around quickly for Rutgers. Favors the side of ACU, and again, important to note the colors may be switched, but our scoreboard is correct. Yeah, I mean, the, right there, out of those players, you want to see a little bit better communication on that pinch there. If that player rotating through window could have gotten there slightly faster, or if that player didn't make that challenge, could have seen a very different outcome there. As we look towards this next round, we'll opt to see what Rutgers is going to do on the offensive th side of things as ACU able to take the first round, kind of brush off that close loss. You see two players with three kills each, and zero deaths on the side of ACU. So maybe watch those two players, X Factor and Jace down, see if they'll able to pick up some streaks in this round. And again, if you're unfamiliar with how the Codcaster scoreboard works, that those kills are not just credited by just solo kills, it's about damage dealt. So you're probably wondering how do they get six eliminations when there's only five players in the board? And that is the logic behind it. As in this round, as we get back into it, it is a 4-2 situation after the opening gunfights over the middle favoring Rutgers. It looks like they want to rotate right through lobby over towards A, and they're going to be able to do so for pretty much free. Yeah, these two players on the side of ACU, I'd like to see them group up, try to pick off one together, make sure that there's a trade there, make a 1v3 that is still clutchable, albeit in this game very difficult to pull off as these players are going to rotate on the flank. Should be able to watch this on the side of Rutgers. Yes, that one player, Palma, able to find one. Gets traded out quickly. A 1v3, 23 seconds. What are you going to be able to do here? Nothing. You fly into two guns aimed right at you. Indian Gamer able to pick up that one. And Rutgers bounces back in that round, tying this one up at 1-1. One one. Yeah, tough situation for Huntley. He goes for the 50-50 peak. Picks, he's right. But his opponent's on the left. And there's nothing you can do about it. Palma, these are these opening shots over the middle. As you saw, the trade just happen as his teammate falls just to his left, and those were those opening kills that left with us those four on two. So we're tied up 1-1 as we go into round three, and again, you saw those big kill streaks that were starting to get up but as far as those 3-0 scorelines. Jace now sitting at 4-1, and one, halfway to the War Machine. He is just about the furthest one along in the specialist charge. Yeah, and that War Machine can come in big if you don't have trophies or flak on, and... Most players do not expect to see that this early in a in an S and D here. So if he's able to get that quickly, 
That would, could be a big game changer, but Ari able to pick up Huntley quickly. That's a big kill, giving them the man advantage. The Inquisition trades that out right there, evening this one up at 4-4, but another gunfight goes down. Ari trades it out. 4v3 in favor of ACU as they're going to push this A-bomb site. Inquisition finds another. That's what you love to what see. A you have play. a little bit of a slow game one. Clutching up for the squad here. Finds another. Jeez. That was such a big play from Inquisition, able to stay alive, not only as he peeked from vents, but he also survived a concussion for a trade and then slid on in for another. And I imagine we'll see that one again. And we absolutely will. Just absolutely great gun sense. Again, this peek only is successful because there's pressure from those tree boxes just behind him. And that's exactly the case. As you saw, the Prophet player was peeking over the middle and Inquisition gets a free pick. And then this concussion recovery, beautiful from the hit fire straight into the quick draw. And then he slides forward after the stim shot to find a third. We won't see that one, unfortunately, but great play from Inquisition. Really good game sense to know exactly how to hold those corners with the Maddox. Yeah, you got to love that tack mask. I assume he had to be running that there to be able to pick that one up. That concussion very much did not affect him for long enough there. And I called him out in game one. He was able to bring it back towards the end there, bring his team close in that map. And in this one, he's kind of showing off his gun skill here, which you'd love to see from a casting perspective. As a fan perspective, you'd love to see a player turn it around quickly and show up on stream here. But it looks like there's going to be gunfights over towards this A-bomb site. Everyone from the side of um, Rutgers is going to be here. One player on the flank for ACU might be able to make a big play, but the gunfights are going in favor of Rutgers quickly. That player's got to get there and oh. get there fast. Prodigy able to find two kills, and now Huntley from behind able to find another. So a one on two that does favor Rutgers and X Factor Prodigy. He needs an automatic weapon, and, and he finds uh, Maddox, but the bomb is being planted. Does he know what's here? Will he switch back over to the Paladin just to make a play with it potentially? Yeah, see right there, I would have loved him to switch to the Paladin and pick off one of those players quickly, as he might be able to do. It's the oh only goodness. way I can see him winning peaks. this. Gotta get nervous right <laughs> we'll there. Doesn't check in. the corner. Yeah. As you were saying, Palma sitting in that corner with the Sog, able to pick him up. As this this game back and forth, 2-2 two, two round count here in this S&D. We're going to be able to see some nice snipes from X-Factor here. Yeah, and these were just clutch. Again, this little head peak is just so hard, and he finds the one, and then the second one is actually, I believe, a headshot as he just gets a quick up on the ledge. Beautiful little flick up. Ooh, with the Thank flinch Thank you very there. much. We'll take those all day. Yeah, that's a lovely snipe. Two snipes, actually, there from the side of ACU and X-Factor. ACU going to be opting to be on the offensive side here again because that's how S&D works. You switch and take turns. It looks like they're going to be heading over towards the A bomb site. Another standard 2-1-2 two, two defensive split from Rutgers. It's been working for them. We'll see if it's able to work here. And I believe, actually, Rutgers got the information that it was a full hit. You could see everybody who was holding those stairs would just back up. Hope you can bait out some of the utility. And a concussion does get out, but a good position. Goodness, with those trained headshots. It will be traded away. So a little four on four. Jace with the bomb will just prone up and put the bomb down. And it comes down to the retake now for Rutgers. Yeah, on this bomb site, it's difficult to retake unless you have the player on the flank, which no one from Rutgers is. They're going to have to run into some gunfights, but Palma wins one on a pre-aim. When you gotta win for ACU as he finds another. And the trades are going in favor of Rutgers here. It's a 1v4. One player is already on the bomb. Hops off. To try to win the gunfight. Huntley almost goes big. But Rutgers able to get the defuse and win this round. Would have been a tall task, <laughs> to say the least. But a uh, nice little play from Ty, actually. He kind of half mantles the planter over just in front of him as you watch him defuse. And actually caught the player who was prone laying there and just peeked around the corner, found the easy kills. And now we've got ourselves a game on our hands as we got 3-2 going into round six and Rutgers with the lead. But it's been almost all A the last couple of rounds. Maybe we'll see some diversity. Nothing's been hit up the middle yet, which is kind of surprising, at least from my perspective, Stents. Yeah, I mean, in s &D, that's one of those things that can be amazing. I mean, you can hope to blind counter that, but if you get you usually only send one player to watch that mid lane. So if they're running into two, three, four, five players there, that's going to be very hard to win for that one player. And so that could be something one of these teams could do to try to switch up the pace here and try to, you know, establish their dominance in this S and D. As it looks like we might see that here. You see four players hitting mid for the side of Rutgers. Something we just called out. One player over towards this B side. So they might be trying to hit mid to B. Is might be the play here. 
Beasting able to sniff this one out. A couple of shots through those double doors as well. And now it just comes down to Lou. Will he expect this peak? Oh my gosh, he saw the foot. And that's just not what you want to see from Huntley. That's got to be frustrating. How, he's probably sitting there thinking, what are you doing peaking that? And now Lou with another. And that's going to open up this site at B very easily. We'll actually slide under the last couple ICR shots from the elevator area. And now it just comes down to what else can he find? And oh my goodness, he won that gunfight as well. That should never have gone his way. Beasting is going to be in a tough spot. It's just him and Inquisition. Two on three, though. Fortunately, Bomb is down, unfortunately, for the side of the defense. Yeah, this could be a 2 v 5 clutch if these players are able to find the kills and get the defuse, but it's going to be oh so hard with this defensive setup. You can watch every single angle with three players. When the gunfights go down. Beasting gets traded out. 1v3 opportunity. Able to find one. Puts bullets into a second and maybe even a third, but... No kills for the side of Inquisition there after that. And Rutgers goes up 4-2. This play from Lou is just brass stones on this guy. I mean, able to find the first, which, yeah, okay, great. You happen to peek that corner. But these next two gunfights that he takes are just... Oh, you only going to see one of them. But he finds that one, then pushes through and finds another just in the spawn of the defensive area. But that those three kills were huge as far as opening up the site. And now even more beyond that, you take a look at the specialists, there are a couple that are either ready or close for Rutgers. And I guess Jace is the closest to the war machine for ACU, but it's definitely favoring Rutgers at the moment in the economy. Yeah, you're going to see them pop that TAC-5 right off the rip there. Yeah, that's something you love to see in S&D. That's to give you that extra bullet just in case you miss your first bullet or you're slow to react. That's what you love to see. But Rutgers right here, they're taking out the side of ACU. 5-3 man count in favor of Rutgers. And right now you only see Ty there only lost one of his crash bars. Everyone else, I guess Lou also lost one. Palma goes down, might have gotten two there, Beasting, but the beatdown comes in for Lou. Trades going back and forth, 3v1 scenario. And Jace gets traded out by Indian Gamer. And Rutgers up 5-2. It's looking smooth, but there are a couple of moments in here where if you're ACU, you know where the ICR was playing of Lou. He was holding the right side outer area, kind of barrels heady, and it was triple peaked, and he found himself a kill because of it. And you have to think at a certain point, all right, we know the ICR is holding this long angle. Let's not peak that angle, but not quite the discipline yet for ACU early on in season one. And those are moments that will cost you rounds and... We can argue that that may not have been super significant, but that opening first blood from Rutgers' perspective has to feel good. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you really want in S&D. You want to have that confidence to say, hey, we have one more man, two more men than them, so you can take those little bit risky gunfights knowing your teammates are there for the trade. And right now, no one at this A site. ACU players should be calling it out. War Machine out for Jace, able to find one there to give him a man advantage. And right now you need everything you can get from that War Machine. It looks like he's only going to be able to get that one as the call-outs come into the other Rutgers players. Hey, don't chow this. There's a War Machine over there. Yeah, and they're actually going to rotate all the way around, it looks like, as well as Bombside A is being sniffed out. Jace will actually be on the long flank here as it looks like the map has been just completely turned in on its side as... It just comes down to what else could potentially be used as that war machine is just about, if not already, worn out. And it comes down to, yeah, he's pulled out the Maddox now. And look at this, just control for Rutgers. It is a three-on-four bomb has been planted, though, as it looks for the retake for ACU. Yeah, that's the nice thing. They do have four players to retake this bomb site. The gunfights are so big, and ACU able to win all three. And they're going to be able to get this defuse and take another round on the board. Keep themselves alive in this one. A very important round two, and oh, I don't, I don't know if I like this. They're giving the bomb defuse to Inquisition to give him the grab slam. You almost wonder if that would have been more value as you go to offense, possibly giving it to the tack five player who I believe was just about a hundred points off. Yeah, but I mean, regardless, we're looking at a two round differential and only a grab slam by the look of it for ACU. Yeah, and if they do indeed have that grand grass slam, that's something you're going to have to use properly. You're going to have to hope you get it down before you get shot. Might be helpful in that lobby area towards mid or just flying out the window towards one of those bomb sites. Try to get one of them off of it. And, I mean, that's just as we look at the specialist economy, it's just favoring the side of Rutgers. I mean, you do have a Tempest and um, that, gra that aforementioned Grav Slam, but Rutgers just has more. <laughs> they have more utility. Absolutely. 
although a lot of trades happening over a lot of damage actually funneling to Indian Gamer, who has the Tempest out and is just able to find one down, but can he follow up? The Tac Mask will allow Huntley to get back up, wants to try to follow up, and that's an over-aggressive push for Indian Gamer. Now what for Maceu? They can put themselves in a position to put this just within one round, and they might not even have to use anything. If they can find one more kill, put this to a five on three, you could very well go into round number 10 with a lot of efficiency. You know, one more shot will do. It'll be traded, but still a four on three. Bomb looking to be planted. Graf Slime coming in, and oh, nothing on it. Huge whip. Ignite Lou also taken down, and ACU has used absolutely nothing for this. Huge value round if they're able to close out this 3v1. Yeah, and they should be able to. They have Bomb down. They have Heglitz. Player shots going into the body of Palma. His time is numbered unless he's able to make the biggest play of his life right here. It's just so tough to push this. They have both sides watched. Gun, guns looking at every angle he has to escape. He's down in health. He's going to jump off the map. Jumps back in. He's just toying with him now. <laughs> Looking for someone to push into him, but he's not going to be given the opportunity, although he did make it tempting a couple different times. But regardless, the round still favors 5-4. Looking to go into round 10, and again, ACU did not have to use anything for that round, which is huge value. So now as you go into round 10, you can very well see this one going ACU's way, and we very well may see ourselves in round 11. Yeah, and for the side of Rutgers, if ACU does make this comeback, that's just rough to deal with mentally. They just needed one more round, 5-2. But as we saw at the PLQ, those 5-1 comebacks are not unheard of. And this is only a 5-2 comeback, and they have the utility now. Only an Annihilator on the side of Rutgers to combat. And they've got their own Annihilator. They have a Tempest. They have a Grav Slam. And as oh, I said, that no longer... <laughs> X-Factor gets gunned by Ty there. And at a certain point of your AC, you need to find, oh no, Inquisition. He could have possibly snuck out of the vents and just slammed everybody They're coming into the point, but he pops one. And now Huntley, speaking of popping, is able to get something out of that Annihilator, at least two kills, opening up space for Inquisition. He's gonna grab Slam in, finds himself one, needs a turn for the second, but I'm not 100% sure that he was there. And it just comes down to one last player, but Lou holds the angle and it will be Rutgers running away with this one a little bit, not comfortably, I would say. 6-4 the score, and it looks like it will be a two map to nothing favoring the side of Rutgers as we will be going into map three shortly. Yeah, they heard me bring up a comeback and they decided we're going to shut this down immediately. Something uh, very good teams you often do. You don't want to let them take those round after round, start to build momentum, maybe even build streaks. Rutgers able to close out that S&D, puts themselves, as you said, in a very good position in this series. As you go towards another Arsenal, this time control. Based upon what we've seen so far, do you have a favorite in this one? I want to say if my memory serves me right, which at my age sometimes doesn't, I want to say we saw Rutgers against RIT Black play control on Arsenal, if I'm not completely mistaken. Uh, and if it was the case, those were the teams we saw. Rutgers did handle it pretty nicely, but I don't want to go too far ahead because someone will probably tell me how wrong I am when I'm inevitably so. But regardless, I mean, what we've seen on how they've approached bomb sites, especially on Arsenal, you would think they have similar setups as far as how they can hit these control points, as well as their live control when it came to the respawn was really nice early on, as we saw. Again, th that hard point was up to about 40 points differential at one point in time before ACU did make that small comeback. So when your rounds are a little bit shorter in the respawn game mode, plus you have that objective control that Rutgers has, you have to think it favors them. But this has been a very close 2-0. That scoreline does not really tell the tale of how this set has gone so far. I mean, that's exactly what we expected going into this. We have two very talented teams. We expected them to lock their horns, get to a long, drawn-out battle. So far, the battle is going in favor of Rutgers. They've been able to clutch up in both our first two maps. A little bit... A little bit a little bit shaky there in the S&D towards the end, but they're able to clutch up. I mean, that's what going up quickly gives you. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I, as we go into this control, I have to lean towards Rutgers just based upon what we've seen so far. But ACU is right there. They can show up and they can easily take it. And honestly, if you were to look at the game inside the game, specialist usage as far as the efficiency and effectiveness goes, I'm actually going to tilt that in favor of how ACU has played with them outside of that one kind of extraordinary circumstance when they both pop the Annihilator and Tempest on top of each other in the hard point, but Huntley's looking good with the Annihilator. The Grav Slam could have been a little bit bigger from Inquisition, but he obviously shoots one straight bullet. But regardless, they've been able to find a lot more value, I feel like, out of those specialists so far, if not just narrowly. Like, if you were to see like the side-by-side -side progression, it'd be like 55-45 kind of favoring ACU, but 
those little things can make a big difference, especially when it comes to control. When you get light into a round where it just comes down to you need to break one more time to get the full control or get the full defense, you have to think that ACU should feel pretty good about their specialist usage so far. Yeah, I mean, we go back to that S and D. We start. We question giving that bomb plan, get that heavy slam, but works out for them. So, I mean, who are we to judge what they're doing? And they did it. It worked out for them. And that's the that's the kind of energy. It's the kind of strate- strategic moves you have to make in things like search and destroy in in game modes like control, where you have a limited live count. I mean, th- that's the kind of smart plays you have to make. That kind of separates you from lower tier teams. It, in the end, it didn't fully work out for them. They didn't indeed lose the map, but they were able to get that gravity slam. They were able to use it to find a kill to give them a chance in that last round. Yeah, and those decision-making abilities come in that much more impactful, I feel like, in control, where it does come down to, do I hit the trigger, do I save it? And Rutgers has been very much so kind of just barely touching the trigger on some of these where they could maybe use them to find a more definitive win on certain rounds or certain points. But regardless, they are still finding themselves up 2-0, so you can't really discredit what they've done so far as we are getting the lobby set up for, again, Arsenal Control. And we saw a very lopsided approach to this the first time around. As we start to see the lives become that much more influential in a closer tight game, which is, I imagine, what we're both expecting at this point, Stens, you have to start making those calls on the fly when it comes down to we only have 10 lives remaining and we still have to break an entire point. Those decisions can be huge as far as do you set up a flank or do you full bull rush a point? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the kind of thing with control. There's so many different ways you can play. You can flood one site. You can send split attacks to both bomb or to both, uh, uh, you know, control points. I mean, there's just so many different control. There's really no one correct way to do it. If if every if you set up a team push and you have a plan as a team, no matter what it is, if you execute it, you can see it work out for you. But hopping into this next control. I'm leaning towards Rutgers just from what we've seen before, but ACU has been so close, just small things, small gunfights that they need to go their way. For all we know, they're a control team. That's one of the things we see. This is that, this is that, you know, game, this is that match changing game type. It's that game three. It's the one you only play once. So this is where you can see the momentum start to shift if we, if the series does indeed get extended. Well, we'll come to find out as we are jumping in. Again, Rutgers, if you're just joining us up 2 oh, this is our second set of the night. We have one more still coming on after this. It just comes down to if this will be terminated on three maps, or will we see a fourth and potentially a fifth? Storylines will only be dictated by ACU and what they're able to put up here, and they will be starting things off defensively, and it looks like it will try to be another A hit for Rutgers, and the first shot's from Lou, just too good, able to find one, and now a little mini flank from Lou as well. The ICR just getting involved in close range, and he's finding success, a lot of effort from Palma as well with the SOG, and all of a sudden, Capture Point A is looking like it's in dire situation for the defense. Yeah, I mean, the side of Rutgers able to hit, win those early gunfights towards A, but as I say that, they get traded out by ACU. Life count is in favor of ACU so far. They're up by three kills. And they and But the side of Rutgers has one ticket A. It looks like these gunfights are going down over towards this, this gun, flat gun side, towards this window area. And this defensive play, see number 10 for the side of ACU is pushed up very deep into the spawn. An Indian gamer wanted to make a heroic play there, came right out of the window, and now Ari from behind is able to find himself one who was a little bit over aggressive on the defense and looking for more shots on the pillar. Inquisition does not appreciate that, and how about that for a cluster to come on in as well? One HP needs to pull out the gun, but Ari, what happened there? It looks like he wanted to switch weapons for a second. He actually gets taken down from behind as Jace pulls a little mini flank from the window. Inquisition coming back in, and a nice little double hit defensively. ACU looking really clean on this defense. I mean, that's kind of what you wanted to see here. You want to see ACU rebound from two losses they're setting up they have the kill advantage and they're not giving up any any basic time to the side of Rutgers their gunfights going in favor looks like this one's going to be settled early and I don't know how much I enjoy this call from Rutgers they just keep going and funneling into a and you can kind of see in the minimap Jace he's sitting up in that upper L barrel area and he's been holding down that windows area for so long and if nobody peeks and there's effort being put on the point, he just rotates the window and he's immediately behind. This really good play from Jace as he's able to help out from so many different angles. And it's going to be actually X-Factor pulling this play of the game right off the rip, I believe. This is right as we see them coming in from behind, actually. And this little flank was very well found. No one able to handle it from Rutgers. Yeah, ACU showed up in this game type. And like I said before, this is the one game 
if you're gonna change the momentum in a series, you see it's so often done in control. Looking at the scoreboard here, just the gunfights are going in favor of ACU heavily. You got Inquisition at six and one. Huntley, five and one. And Jace is well at five and one, and as ACU setting up their offense, a couple shots will be landed over by B. And looks like the follow-up will try to be there. Huntley will turn around, and my goodness, that timing is beautiful as he's able to take down one on the flank and will actually dissuade the other from peeking. Indian Gamer needs to find some force from the big stairs right up front of the point as it is getting captured. First take of percentage already found, looking for another, but Indian Gamer will come in to contest and he'll be able to find himself another. He's been really clutching these little mini peaks that he keeps finding with his Maddox. He will also set up a trophy system, but it's already going A for ACU. I love the little switch and hit going here from B to A. Yeah, that's a very common strategy. You go towards one site, you flood it, you hold it, and as soon as your players start to fall, they rotate over towards that other site to try to get a tick done before the defense is able to react. And right here, it looks like they're going to be able to take all of this time of day. It looks like it's being chalked up by the defense here. Yikes. Now they just have to hold the line at B. Ignite Lou, able to that's... find two. Almost able to find another falls up to Inquisition. Talk about a huge capture for ACU. They're able to do it with a life advantage as well. So now just under two minutes to try to find a setup just to hit B for two ticks. They already still have that one bit of progress that they had from their first hit before. Palma looking to get on in and not going to be able to find much success with the lobby. will back up, reconsider how he wants to hit this. And plenty of time again to play with. And you don't necessarily have to play lives on this first go. Beasting will throw out a trophy, maybe setting up the push here, but he'll actually peek and just narrowly get to the single planter. And it comes down to who else can help out at this point. And it looks like the help will be a little bit laid as Palma is able to find the kill over the lobby. And all of a sudden, Rutgers setting up a very nice fortified defense. Yeah, the, the live count was even. They just attempted to break into the site there. They all fall, not able to pick up kills. And the, and the live count is now 19 to 15 in favor of Rutgers. Only though just... with two at the ICR, the uh, headshots ringing in nicely for him. Able to get a tune out of that trombone. Looking for more, potentially, and now we're just going to get another trophy system down. I believe the trophy system in place, the defense will actually take care of it, though. And so it actually is. Rutgers continue to increase their lead, and all of a sudden this round is completely folding for ACU. They need to find a way to set things up. They have one player on the back, but again, X-Factor, he's in the point by himself. Nobody else from his team is there, and you have to think, where's the timing for all of this? It's looking to be a six-life differential and a lot of delay coming out of tie from the back line. He will be traded, but the respawns will get him back in time for this next defense. Yeah, I mean, you might want to see him play a little bit slower there, wait for some teammate support. But right now, the live count is getting closer and closer, 12-9 in favor of Rutgers. All they have to do is hold the point and trade out on this defensive side, but the gunfights are going in favor of... Oh my gosh. So also dangerous. Also has an annihilator if he does want it. Continues to lock down these long angles. Will eventually be pressured from the lobby, but has the damage already been done? It has to be contested as we're about halfway through the third tick of this. Just two lives left, though, for ACU. So the re-engage from Palma and Indian Gamer is good enough, although Huntley made it a little bit more trying than Rutgers would have liked. One more potential try at this, but with the uh, no X-Factor falling, it's pretty much all hope lost. Huntley will just back away, not feed any more kills, and we will be drawn up 1-1, but what an effort from ACU late in that round. Yeah, they play that very smart, but at towards the end there, they're just not able to rack up those last couple ticks there. And as we go to the next round of this control, it's going to be tied up one to one. And based upon those two rounds, I, I could imagine anything happening in this one. Rutgers looked very strong in the first round. AC, ACU looked strong in the second round. And they, in both of those cases, they end up losing the, their respective rounds. So tied up at one to one, this control just so back and forth. This angle from Huntley was just so well utilized. He finds himself three kills after the back, and I believe he had one more before that. So if he survives, he's very close to score streaks, but not going to be the case as we go into round three. And we start to get to the conversation here where specialists will very much so be a big factor as we go through stents. And again, as we mentioned just before, ACU has looked just a little bit cleaner on those specialist uses so far. We'll see if that holds true here. Yeah, you got Gravity Slam on Inquisition. You have Huntley's Annihilator at... And that Graf Slam oh, no. looks like it was called in. Unable to get anything shot before it's used. It's just rough for the side of ACU. Well, no stands. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the industry, but there is something called the Caster's Curse, and there is the perfect <laughs> example of that happening right there. 
Looking for a very desperate grab slam at essentially 1 HP and will be punished. Now Rutgers will hit the tack 5 and look to potentially hit A very hard with a cluster nade with support. One life advantage as well, although that will be continue to be traded away. And nice shots from Ari. We'll be able to hold down these double doors from a nice tight angle on the pillar. And the capture percentage starting to tick up. But only one player here so far. Now finally the rest of Rutgers is here for support. And what else could potentially be used? They also have a War Machine, Tempest, the Grab Slam, and the Annihilator. If they even need it, you would think yeah. at this point, though, if they can capture it for free, you'll might likely see a snowball happening towards point B. And with this likely, maybe not even that much, as X-Factor Prodigy will try to recontest in the window, finding himself too. But the progress at A has already been done, Stents, and now it just comes down to what will happen at B. I mean, that's that's what we see almost every time in this map. You see A take fairly quickly, and then it just goes down to gunfight B site. Rutgers with the man advantage, so you have to lean on one side. You gotta favor Rutgers. They already have a tick through this hill. We are gonna see a Tempest being popped out. Huntley also utilizing the Annihilator, just holding the long left angle from these stairs, and it's gonna open up so much space for Inquisition to peak. Shots will be trended eventually. Still three in the chamber, and you can't imagine anyone else will peak that angle, and yeah, he's gonna readjust his line of sight, look over to the planner long, but Again, this is just ample time for Rutgers to say, okay, let's not peek this long. Let's just set ourselves up for a flank, and that's exactly what they're doing really well rotated for Rutgers. Yeah, you gotta have that patience to say, okay, we just captured that we captured that first zone, and now we can we have some time to play with. We can kind of flank this hill if we want, try to hit them from the back. The gunfight's going back and forth. Looks like it's gonna be, uh, for the moment, it's gonna be ACU winning all most of the gunfights here. Live advantage still in favor of Rutgers. And then they're gonna hop into the zone here. They're catching this very wow. quickly. Multiple players on the hill. This could be over fast. Yeah, you can't let this happen for ACU. It was essentially just Ty and Ari on the point and they hold each other's crossfire angles and they both find the wins. A lot of specialists spanked as well. So for Rutgers, you're looking at 2-1 going into round four. And it just comes down at this point to who hits better. We'll take a look at Ty one more time as this was that last hit over by B. Yeah, he's going to be able to find a couple in this final kill cam. The best play of the game. Snaps onto Beasting there. Snaps onto another Inquisition. Beams him with that ICR from that head glitch. So we go towards this next round. Rutgers only needs one more control round and they take this entire series such a closely contested series but it could end in a 3-0 four out of the five holding specialist you hate to see that and it will be actually acu starting things off with attack so can there be any counter specialist usage to kind of eliminate that 200 hp blue will say how about one of these we'll take down one looking for a second how about it looking for a third he always rushes these last couple shots but not here able to find three put that away there are ladies present looking for a ford not going to find it on the window but still, the damage has been dealt. The TAC-5 essentially useless. All beyond the igniter using the Annihilator. Yeah, and you see Ari actually pulled out a War Machine there, but Lou picks up everyone with that Annihilator. Able to find, only able to find one with the War Machine before dropping, but they're able to hold strong defensively. And they're going to push forward, try to hold these angles, not let them come close to either of these zones, and try to end this quickly. Tempest was also used for Indian Gamer, and you saw a couple players staggering and electrocuted, but none of them going down. But Lou just finding the fire, just feed the hot hand. Why don't you be able to find two headshots at long range? And now he's sitting on just absolute streaks, and this is going to be super punishing. The Hellstorm finds two, also has a lightning strike, and why not just use it? 16 seconds left, and it's going to be very difficult, I think, at this point for ACU to even set a foot on either of the capture points. And with this pressure coming out from Rutgers, it doesn't look like it. Lou, my goodness, just so steady. Three seconds left. No one's going to even come close to touching. Rutgers will take the 3-1, three 3-0 three in the series and maps. And that will lead to their second win in the season so far. Looking solid against ACU. Yeah, I mean, ACU put up one heck of a good fight. But in that control, Rutgers just able to come out with the better specialist usage. That was one of the things we highlighted before this control. We said it was slightly in favor of ACU, but in this control, Rutgers able to utilize their specialists, able to get them faster because they were out slaying, and that's just what's going to win you control. You, you can you know where the players are going to be coming from. You just aim those super high powerful weapons at those angles, and you can just win those gunfights.
And that's exactly what happened, and that usually ends up with a victory. And how about a 3-0 map total to go with it? You love to see it from Rutgers. Obviously, a pretty tough opponent there in ACU. Put up a very valiant effort, but just not quite enough. Uh, Lou, again, one of my players to watch for, I think, as we've now seen him twice on stream, and both times he has absolutely performed, sitting with 4,600 damage, topping the charts across the board. And uh, those are just, again, things. 28 and 15 overall for Lou. He uh, came in just after our first set before and said, thanks for the gas, guys. Well, it's, it's on sale, Lou. You can find as much of that as you want. And it looks like that will be our second set. But against Dents, we have a third one coming up later tonight. This action does not stop here with the CCL. No, we. that's the one nice thing about this. Multiple matches for us to watch for everyone's viewing pleasure for casting pleasure and it's just the, one of the great things about the ccl is that you know when there's going to be matches you know the kind of caliber of squads that are going to be in each and there's always a, it's always a good time there's no other place to be on your tuesday and thursday evenings i do i agree i, I i'm here you're here we have to agree at this point i think as we wrap things up here again that was the finish of rutgers taking on abilene christian up next We've got ourselves Cincinnati taking on Iowa, a battle over the Midwest, although separated by a couple of states that start with the letter I in between. But we'll have that one continuing on. We're to send things to a quick intermission as we get our second set, or third set rather, coming up. That's been Stents. I've been Shift. We'll catch you guys in the back end of this break with the continuation of the CCL week one, day two, just after this.